I remember I was on an underground train with a boyfriend and um, he suddenly noticed that I couldn't actually read some adverts that were within about sort of two or three yards. And he urged me to go and get my eyesight checked out at that point, really. I was diagnosed with MD when I was about 19. I had a, um, a sort of what is supposed to be a hereditary uh, form called Stargardt's disease. Um, and um, ever since then, I have sort of just managed to sort of uh, cope with it, really. When I wanted to work, um, that was, I was confronted with very menial work and I had a reasonably good education so I just never ever got the mental stimulation within my work that I would have really enjoyed. I couldn't copy type and I couldn't work in a shop because I couldn't see a cash register uh, and in the end I, most of my um, work, working life was spent in sort of doing care work really. Um, uh, which um, I quite enjoyed, but it was actually physically very strenuous, really. Uh, but having said that, um, it brought me into um, it brought me into contact with old people, so um, I who were suffering with AMD, um, and so I was because I had it myself. I was able to give them that sort of special understanding. It was the fact that they seemed to have been rather abandoned and where, uh, whereas I had all my visual aids well and truly set up, um, old people um, just seemed to be abandoned and they didn't even know about visual aids. They didn't know what they were entitled to. Well, really, I relied on magnifiers, uh, which over the years have got stronger and stronger. I think I started off with a, a plus six um, uh, initially, and I've gradually, now I have to use a plus nine or a plus ten, and I now have to use lights as well, because I have uh, early, uh, early cataracts. I use colour a lot. I use um, sort of, I have red red handles to my knives and um, my my purse is red so that I can see it in my handbag and and uh, generally um, uh, I, I sort of managed to cope with it really uh, in a fairly positive way. It's the public perception of you. It is the fact that you don't look as there's anything wrong with you and they either think you're being lazy when you say you, and you can't and that you should wear your glasses or they think that you're going to fall over all the time and they, they sort of want to wrap you up in cotton wool. People are well-meaning uh, but it, it is very difficult for um, people to understand exactly what you can and you can't see. Once you retire that you then find that um, being visually impaired is more of a problem really because you have all this leisure to fi fill it up and um, w when you can't see um, uh, you and you can't drive and uh, you want it's the fact that you still want to go on being independent when you're retired. I don't honestly ever remember getting sad about it I just felt you know life is too short to, for self-pity. It was just sort of really making the best of things, really. And there was, I mean, I have a great love of music. And as long as I could hear my music, I, I, I mean, that was my great love, really. And there were all so many, I enjoyed life in so many other ways. Uh, my advice to people who have been diagnosed is um, to join organizations, every organization that is interested in or, or is is uh, supportive of that of the condition um, and to do as much research as they can into what will help them. Um, also, as I say, visual aids are really um, vital, but I think some people will immediately go out and spend a vast amount of money on uh, equipment, sort of thousands of pounds, because they're just desperate. And quite often, it's not what they really need. An awful lot of visual um, aid equipment is 
very expensive and uh, uh, there are often much, much cheaper options. If you go to, go to exhibitions, uh, they're always f very crowded, but um, just explore the visual aids particularly and join organisations that uh, sort of self-help groups and everything specifically like that and persevere if you find when you can't first use a magnifier um, people tend to try and hold it at a distance rather whereas invariably you have to hold it right up in your eye uh, to, to get the full benefit of it they try to use it in the wrong way um, and also equally if you love books really um, have audio books Although you've always read, have audio books. Don't struggle and struggle and go on struggling trying to read, uh, because I find my audio books um, invaluable. Really, as I say, just as I say, approach it um, with um, sort of a, a sort of spirit of um, of challenge. You know, challenge and and the fact that you you know you're you're not going to be beaten really.